just look at this mess. This used to be a road. Uh, oh! oh. He's trying to get me. Look at that. Oh, look at that hole. Wait. Dude, put him in the bucket. Oh! <laughs> look at that. <laughs> look at that. Two more feet. <laughs> look at that bucket. <laughs> oh, he's so feisty. What is up folks, welcome back to another video. Now we are in full rescue operation mode because right in front of me is one of our most beloved ponds on the channel. In fact, it's a beloved pond in the community. We are at Buds and Blossoms today folks and just look at this mess. Oh my God. So if you guys didn't know, I've mentioned it in a couple recent videos, but we have been getting pounded by flooding torrential rain in the southeast for the last week and a half. And it has caused extensive damage, not only on my property, but the surrounding communities as well. And this pond, or what used to be a pond right in front of us, we have fished here for videos for years. We've come out here and caught bass and different fish, had a great time. And now look at her. Look what they did to my baby, Andrew. Look Dude, what they did to I can't her. Here's the thing though, we do not have time to be upset. We have to act quickly because now there's no rain in the forecast for the next few days and this thing is gonna dry up very soon. So how this has happened, because you don't think of a pond drying up during a flood, but here's the thing. This particular area on the highway actually flooded incredibly bad to where there was cars underwater trying to cross the road right here. But because of that, all that water rushing and gushing through here created a vortex that ended up sucking all of the water out of the pond. And that happened when the dam broke. You guys should know, anytime a dam breaks, that's not good. So I immediately called the owner, asked for permission. I said, hey, look, man, you've got a little bit of water left over here in this pond. I think there's probably fish trapped in there. Me and my cameraman, Andrew, will come out here and we will relocate those fish for you and save them. There are ponds right next door to this former pond that we can put the fish in. So we have plenty of places to put them. But if we don't act today, these fish will die. So enough talk. We need to fill up some coolers with some water. We got to get some mud boots on. We've got to get hand nets, cast nets. Look, there's a fish right there trying to escape. Oh shoot, that's muddy. Oh shoot. Oh, there's a fish right there trying to get out. There's fish literally trying to go up this stream right here to make it to that pond. But the problem is some of these streams are not connected. And some of these puddles out here, especially way back there, are just not connected. They're not gonna be able to get out. Jesus. Oh, oh my God. This is gonna be a sloppy go. Now this is a little bit of a rush job, folks. So we grabbed the only two coolers that we had with wheels. We also got these two nets. They're gonna be very effective. And we have a cast net that I can't throw very well, but in this scenario, I don't think I have to throw it too well to get fish. Simple plan. We're gonna fill these coolers about three quarters of the way with water out of the little ponds that are left. We're gonna try to rescue as many fish as we can per trip. And then we're just gonna wheel them to whichever safe pond is closer to where we are. Dude, like come on, let's save some fish, bro. Let's do it, man. There's a ton of them in there. Dude, we've seen a ton already. We've seen so many. I see fish swirling around right now. Now, I just chatted with the ownership a little bit and they said there are some big bass in these ponds that are probably stuck. The owner also told me there was some huge brim might be stuck in here too. But from my experience doing fish rescues, and I have done a couple before, normally it's a dried up pond, like a drought. Oh, dude, look at those bass right there. There's like two or three big bass right there. Oh my God. Okay, let's try to get over there. Don't make any sudden moves, they're right. Dude, they're in the mud. We've got to get them out. Guys, there are several not small bass right there and they're in the mud. We're about to save these. I just don't want to spook them. We also have to get water in this thing, first things first. I'm looking for a spot on this busted dam where I could put water in the cooler. This is kind of wacky. Guys, look at this. Look at this. This used to be a road. Oh my gosh. This is honestly, it's all like overwhelming. This is crazy. I think I might try to ease down right here. Oh yeah, there's another bass right there. There's so many that are stuck. Look, there's one that's trapped right there. He's trying to figure out how to come through here and get but I don't know if they can make it through this. And this is gonna be gone in a few hours probably if the sun stays up the way it is. We have an expiring timeline here. We're gonna to have to act quick. Okay. Here we go. I don't think he's too keen on going anywhere. Yeah, I don't think so. He doesn't look very healthy. God, a fish just took off right in front of me. He just went that way. That didn't get nearly enough water. Oh, already got water in the muck boots, baby. Let's go. 
I like that. Is that a fish right there? There's a fish right there. Throw me a net. They're way over there. Right Guys, I just saw a fish right next to me in this puddle, in this muck. This is insane. There's two bass are still right there. Toss it. Sparta. Nice catch. Dude, there was a fish right here. He was like in the mud, dude. But he'll come back. This That won't be the last one we get to try net. Oh, dude, you netted him. You just oh, threw him up on the, you just threw him up on the bank. Oh, I didn't know there was fish in there. Well, he was, he's about to flop back in. So I did scoop a fish. You did scoop him. That wasn't even the one I, I thought I was scooping. All right, that's good enough for now. It's gonna be a little bit of a muddy day, I think. First things first, we gotta get these bass right here. These are the first decent sized bass that I've seen. The rest of them have been some kind of smaller ones and these guys seem like they're so lethargic. They might not be feeling too good. Dude, this is an eight footer, man, I don't know. If I mess this throw up, these bass are gonna get away. Yes, yes, so I perfect. cannot mess this throw up. <laughs> I missed both of them, but they can't go anywhere. There's so much mud, it's crazy. I got a bunch of bait fish, bunch of tiny bait fish, brim. Well, I just mucked that all up. It was not a very good throw. Oh my God, I am going to be a filthy, filthy man. Yeah. How much further can I go out? That's the real, I see a back right there. How he goes. That was the worst throw ever, Andrew. Do I have anything? Do you? Oh, I got something. Nothing big, but I got something. Oh, he got away. No. Dang it. If I could, if I throw this cast net good one time, we'll be good. You got a turtle. Oh, a baby turtle. Look at that little brim right there. Just muddy. Oh my gosh, this is crazy. All right, folks, before we continue in today's video, I want to give you a quick special word from the video sponsor, Deeper Smart Sonar. Guys, I have been using Deeper Smart Sonar products on my channel for five years now. And that is because this thing right here is one of the most versatile fishing tools in my fishing bag. This bad boy can be utilized from the bank via rod and reel and line or a piece of rope. This thing can be mounted to the side of a boat or a kayak using the flexible 2.0 mount arm. This thing truly does it all. Not only can it be used anywhere, it's going to transmit that smart sonar information directly to your smartphone via the Fish Deeper app. Now, I don't know about you guys, but having sonar information, i.e. water temperature, water depth, structure, contour, GPS mapping, those are all features that I definitely want in my pocket available through my smartphone when I'm fishing. Guys, Deeper's been a sponsor on the channel forever. I love these guys. I love these products. Click the link right at the top of the description. Go check them out. See what deals they're running this summer. Get yourself outfitted with one of the most versatile fishing tools on the market today. From a bank angler's perspective and a kayak angler's perspective, which is what I am, I could never afford a $90,000 bass boat with all the bells and whistles, all the sonar. This thing right here is affordable. It's portable, super versatile, fits in your pocket. What else is there to say? Big shout out to Deeper for sponsoring today's video. Now, let's get back to it. I'm swimming in it, Andrew. You are swimming in it. Look at my guy here. That's a baby snapper. Oh, look at his head. Dude. He's trying to get me. He's trying so hard. Woo! There's a bass right there. He's coming to us. Where's the net? Got him. Got him. Look at that. Oh. <laughs> Look at that. That's a four pound largemouth. That's the first one we've even found. That's oh, crazy. you're kidding me. I don't know if I've ever even caught one this big out of this pond. No, never. Oh, let's get him in the cooler. Dude, would you run him for me? I, got you. I think I'm better off just standing yeah, here. You're probably stuck for a minute. Oh, I'm a oh. For a minute. Dude, hold on. Tag me in. Are you good? I got it. Yeah, I just about broke my ankle. That bass swam right up to us right there and laid over and was almost like, help me. I think it was calling for help. That was a scream for help right there. I may have underestimated how many pairs of clothing it was going to take yeah. to get this done. I <laughs> hey, look, on a rescue mission, 
you don't have time to look pretty, okay? You just have to get the rescue done. Look, there's bass flopping right there trying to figure it out. That's a good sized bass too. Oh, dude, he's coming right to me. He's getting washed down this little gully. He's gonna be here in just a second. You see him anymore? Maybe right there? Yeah. Dude, I'm hoping he works his way down here. There's still a good sized bass trapped in this puddle right here. Oh, that's just straight slop mud right there. That's sloppy. Look at that, look at that bass. Look at his shoulders. That's a man. I'm going to him. I'm going to get him. I'm using this stick as a way to find hard ground. Oh, that's see, that's not hard. Can't step there. I can step there though. That's a good size one. Oh, he turned around. Oh, here he comes. Oh my gosh, he's working his way to me. Oh. Oh, I gotta keep going. Okay. We're so close to him. I just don't want to sink to my waist and drown in this tiny pond. Oh, he's mine. This might be a five pounder. Look at my guy. Oh, that's a big bass. Guys. Oh, that's mud. I can't go any further. I can't go any further. I need him to come like two more feet. Dang it, I missed him, Andrew. That might be a six. I'm about to go get him. He ain't getting away like that. He can't do me like that. Dude, this works great, finding hard ground, but he keeps going to the softest stuff. It's like he knows. Okay. He swerved me again. Oh! oh! Let's go. Let's go. Oh! Oh, a fish slapped me in the Look at that bucket. Oh, he's so feisty. I can't even hold him. What a man. Are you done? Look at that. I don't want to lose him. Hold on. I'm retracing my steps. Yeah. Watch yourself. Look at that. That might be a five right there. The last one was a four. Look at the noggin. That's a big fish, dude. Look at the bucket mouth. Are you kidding me? In a puddle. In, in a puddle. Why did we never catch these fish when we came out here? Yeah, because they were in the bottom, apparently. I think we all know the answer to that question. You guys suck. <laughs> oh. Okay. If I'm going to work that hard for two fish, those are the two fish I expect right there. That's right. Because this water is so dirty, I can't imagine they have a ton of oxygen in there. Plus, it's summertime, it's super hot. So let's go ahead and relocate these first two bass to their new home. And we'll be back for the rest of them. So this is the pond we're gonna relocate them to right here. Oh my gosh. Dang. Watch yourself, bro. He was just sitting out here. Just chilling, get some sun. Yeah, go ahead, buddy. I'm just trying to help you out. There's a lot of cars coming and going here, dude. Come on. You can't stand there. You're gonna get ran over. You see how he slid, dude? He shot down a little concrete slide. <laughs> that was awesome. So this pond's actually connected to the pond that's drained and to the last pond, but the owner wanted me to put him in this pond because that gives him the best chance of not getting lost and stuck in this situation ever again. I think that's the big one right there. All right, this is, this. I don't know if this is the big one or not. No, this isn't the big one. Maybe it is, hell, I don't know. Freaking crazy. Four, four plus pounder, maybe a five on a good day. Very long, very long fish. Now there's probably gonna be an acclimation process that we're not doing right now, but hey, we're, we're giving this thing the best chance to survive. He's been in a mud pit for a couple days. This water is actually colder like a spring fed pond should be. It's all muddy. Go clean yourself off, girl. I apologize for any inconvenience. This is the one that almost jumped out of the bucket earlier and like shot into my chest. Like he is a man. I'm gonna have to two hand this one. Oh. Yep, he's biting me. Uh-huh. Yeah, <laughs> he's got I a know. head on him. Whew. Oh, it feels so good. Now that one's a little skinnier right there. I think that's the first one we caught. That bass is definitely stressing right now. A little too skinny for my liking, but still a great frame. Hopefully, we'll acclimate to this pond and keep on growing. This one's all muddy too. Just some clean water going through your gills. There you go. Does that help? Huh? Hold on, I don't take off until you're ready. Okay. 
Look how dirty it is, dude. Yeah. There's like a line on it from where the mud stops and where the actual bass color begins. Let's go save some more. I don't see any more fish in this little puddle right here. Now, I do see that baby alligator snapper turtles right there just waiting for me to stick my hands back in there so he can get a piece of me. And all the while, these guys are, I guess they're installing new flow through piping right now, which I guess is a good time to do this because everything's destroyed. Well, while they're working on rebuilding this dam, let's go ahead and head on to the other end of the lake. Big shout out to this place. It's called Buds and Blossoms. It's a local nursery. They sell trees. They sell all types of shrubbery, landscaping stuff. Really cool, locally owned business. They've been very nice to us, very welcoming. So big shout out to them if you guys have any plant needs in the Southeast. Buds and Blossoms, hit them up. Oh, I see a little bass down there. That's a tough shot with the old cast net. Well, why don't you stay like right here? Oh! Oh, the mic on the camera. I don't know if I can get out. Um, hand, pull. Oh, God. Ah. Dude, this mud is no joke, man. What am I stepping on right now? What is this? My leg. No. I'm in. Ah. Maybe if I crawl on all fours. Then I'll be closer to the snakes anyways. They can bite me around the face and get it over with. Oh, I see them. It's a bunch of like brim and bluegill and stuff and some bass. They might be a little on to me. I would have had them. I would have had them too. There's something bubbling on me. It was a fish. That was actually my first decent throw and I lost my footing. The world collapsed underneath me. I'm trying to save the fish, nature. Work with me. They're all kind of running from me now. They're like just far enough away. I may have got something on that one. There's a little bit of a banana, but maybe. You're shitting me right now. Oh, I see they're kind of moving in closer to me. They don't see me anymore. That was decent. I had to have gotten something. That's the first cast net, good cast net thrown all day. We got a brim. Oh, we got multiple brim. Oh, that one's probably gonna get away. Oh, dude, a baby largemouth. Look at this baby largemouth. Look at that. Dude, put him in the bucket. Dude, look at him. Let's rescue him. Oh, hands and knees, that's. <laughs> you like that? I used the net as like a weight to throw my body. It actually kind of worked. It worked. All these fish keep running from me. We have to track them down the old-fashioned way. Uh-oh, I see some fish. Dude, look at all the fish. Yeah, there's a there's a bunch of them. We just rolled up on one. Look at look at them all. One of the biggest school of fish we've seen so far that have been kind of trapped. And now I'm finally throwing a cast net decent too. See if I can get down here to them. Oh no! They're all still there. I don't know if I can throw it this far, but I'm gonna try. <sighs> I may have got some. I had to have got some. Oh, I got a bunch. I got a bunch. I got a bunch of them. Ha <laughs> ha, look at them. Bubbling, flashing. Dude, oh dude. man, we got a mega haul. Let's run back over to the box. <laughs> we got a stick. Dude, look at all these brim. Oh, look at all of them. Got so many. Oh my gosh, there's so many. Look at that. Look at all these bluegills. Look at them. Let's just start grabbing as many as we can. Especially all the good size ones. We gotta have those. Look at the colors on that. Oh, that's a uh, that's something else. That's not a bluegill. Hold on. What do we got here? This is not a bluegill. Is that a rock bass? Could be. No way. Well, we gotta put him in there. We can't sell him out. Definitely gotta get him. We're gonna pick up the rest off camera. We gotta keep slinging this cast net. Clock's ticking. Oh, here we go. Oh, there's dude. There's something in there. Oh my gosh, I'm just gonna throw the cast net. I'm getting better, man. Whoa, that was almost a catastrophe. Oh, I got something. I got some stuff splashing and I got six sticks. Oh, what have we got? Oh no, my net's about to get torn. Oh my gosh, it actually might be already. 
The stick is the cast net's natural enemy. Oh man, look at all these brim, dude. Oh my God. Okay, well we can't even sort through this right now. We just got to take, this is probably another 30 or 40 brim. Let's haul them back to the bucket. Let's check back where we started because we've been kind of walking back and forth. I haven't seen a whole lot of bass like we were seeing in this puddle. But I wonder if we either got them all or spooked them all. Oh, shoot. I see a couple shadows, but I'm not sure. Oh my God. Well, that part of the pond is now kind of hard to get to. They've got an excavator going back there. They're trying to rebuild that dam, and I certainly want them to get on that as quickly as possible. So we're gonna go ahead and stay out of their way for the remainder of this rescue mission. All right, you ready? Are you sure? Because this is about to be the best cast net throw you've ever seen. So now I'm getting warmed up. Oh, it got stuck on my hand. I'm such a dude. Oh, it was a great throw. It just got stuck on my, my right hand. Oh, I got some fish on that one. <laughs> Look at that. Oh my gosh, that's been the best throw I've had all day. There are some good sized brim in there. All right, let's try to get these guys back to the bucket. Oh man, there's some tanks and a turtle and a shad. A, I don't know, maybe a shad or a carp. There's, there's shad and carp. Oh my gosh, let's get this back to the bucket. There's so many different creatures in here. This is nutty. Guys, look at this. Look at this hole right here. Giant brim. Big old bluegill. Look at that. Oh, Look at that haul. Wait. No. That's a carp. I don't know what that Ooh, is. I don't, know. I don't know if I should put that in their pond. Look at that. Look at that joker right there, son. That's a tank, dude. That's a big boy. Look at that. We got these. These look like these look like these look like shad to me almost. No, that's a carp. That's a common carp, isn't it? But we got tons of good sized brim. Got a turtle, what do we got here? Oh, it's a regular turtle. Ow, he's clawing me. You can stay. There's another good size one right there. Look at that guy, that's a beauty. Heck yeah, dude. Beauty. So yeah, we're not gonna bring the carp. I'm gonna toss the carp back, because I'm not sure about that. And some people are very iffy about putting carp in their pond. So we definitely don't wanna move a species, even though these ponds are connected. I don't know if there's carp up there, so I don't wanna introduce any new bad species to any of these ponds. There's so many fish in here. Oh God, it's so spiky. That was a big bluegill. Yeah, it was. That's my guy right there. Oh yeah, they're a little spiny. They're also very feisty. This is very tempting to take some of these brim or like to take one of the big ones back to my pond, micro pond. And I'm sure the owners wouldn't mind, but I didn't have enough time to ask them and I'm not going to steal fish. But check, if you, were, if you wanted to restock your pond's brim population and bluegill population, that's what you'd want your bucket to look like right there. Couple came back in. They weren't ready. Dude, fun fact, but also very sad. They just had this fence system installed like less than a year ago. Oh. And I'm sure that cost a pretty penny to have these, you know, automated rolling sliding gates. And it's already destroyed. Some of the damage that I was talking about in the beginning of this video, I mean, you guys are seeing it. Oh my God, there's a crap ton of life in this little puddle there's a bunch of turtles bait fish let's just throw it in there this is like the beginning of where this pond starts because that pipe down there drains from this other pond but it's also super dry right now and they can't they can't go anywhere i mean they're stuck right here oh good aim 
name, buddy? I tell you what, you should just start calling me the cast net kid because my aim is so good. It's so good. I'm gonna have to get in this hole and do surgery on this thing. Look at this, dude. And this looks deep right here. This is actually kind of deep. This is not shallow. Oh my God. That's like part of the gate. I'm a dirty boy. Yes, you are, dude. I was just starting to build some confidence, too, with the cast net. Yeah, you were getting good, man. I was making some pretty good throws, and then it just, it all fell apart like it's continuing to do right now. I just, I'm just at my, at my limit today, I think. These boots are so hard to take off once they're full water. Oh my God, that feels so good. Yep. Like you said, it's instant relief. Instant. Folks, we continue to throw the cast net for about another hour, kind of off camera. Just, we got a lot of brim, tons of brim in this lake. And that's exactly what the owner told me. Unfortunately, not a ton of bass, besides those two really nice ones that we saw in the beginning, and then a couple of just really small ones throughout the day. But during that time, we were able to save literally hundreds of fish of varying species. So I think maybe at least we put a dent on some of these trapped fish. You'd like to think that we got most of them out, but in reality, there's probably a bunch more. Speaking of that, I'm gonna come back and check with the owners of Buds and Blossoms in a couple days, maybe even tomorrow, and just see what it looks like from day to day. Because if the water starts dissipating more and more, we're gonna have to come back here and do another rescue mission because like I said, we may have only scratched the surface with the fish we saved today. If you guys enjoyed this fish rescue content, make sure you smash the thumbs up button. In fact, if this video gets 10,000 likes, maybe we'll just come back here anyways and see if we can rescue some more fish. I think that would be fun to do regardless. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I love you. We got dirty for this content today, baby, but I'm gonna be honest with you, I love it. It's one of the best times about the summer, getting wet, getting your hands dirty, doing some work. Thank you guys for watching. I love you. We're out of here.